Part 2 My Bookshelf Tour is here. This next shelf, as you can see, is my Harry Potter shelf, with the majority of it being Harry Potter books, along with this cool musical note thing that I have, but we'll, we'll move that out of the way. So, um, my Harry Potter collection is a little bit bigger just because I have some extras. I don't just have the seven. I have, of course, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and then I have the um, UK kids edition of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire with this cover. My dad was in Wales when it was released, so I actually read it for the first time with this and then went back and got this one. Um, and then, of course, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows, and then I have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the UK adult edition, because my dad was back in England when it had been recently released, so I had him pick me that, pick me that up, pick up that for me. There, that's a little bit better. And then over here I have all my little companion books. Of course I have Tales of Beetle the Bard, and then I have Quidditch Through the Ages and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, all by the lovely Miss J.K. Rowling. And then I have MuggleNets.com, What Will Happen in Harry Potter 7. This, of course, I acquired before Harry Potter 7 came out, and I used to visit MuggleNet every day after I came home from school. Then I have Harry a History by Melissa Anelli. This is actually a book that is still applicable now, because it isn't what will happen in the, the upcoming book. It's just about Harry Potter as a phenomena, and how awesomely awesome it is. Then I have the Harry Potter collectibles, and... Harry Potter, You're the Best. These are kitty books that I've had for a long time, probably since I was about eight when I first got into the series. These are like letters to Harry and how awesome he is, and this is like where you can find collectibles and whatnot. And then I have this really tiny book, Conversations with J.K. Rowling, author of Harry Potter, who the only authorized biography. That little tiny book right there. And then I have these two books actually go together. This is for books one through four. It's the ultimate unofficial guide to the mysteries of Harry Potter, an analysis of books one through four. So that's why it's really big. And then I have an analysis of book five. And they're both by Galadriel Waters, which is quite the name to have if you ask me. And then my last little Harry Potter thing I have is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, basically like a mini poster book. It's got 30 pictures from the movie that someone must have given to me at some point. And then I have books that I treasure and think are worthy of being on the same shelf as my Harry Potter collection. I have In the Woods and The Likeness by Tana French. In the Woods is one of my favorite books. The Likeness is also good, but not as good. And then at the very bottom, I once again have more fun books. Uh, they are not novels that you would sit down and read. Um, but I have the World Cup Companion. This made an appearance as my most expensive book in one of my videos. And this is just about uh, the FIFA World Cup. Sorry everybody, it's sort of a satirical humor book about um, after Bush got re-elected and it's Americans apologizing to the world for re-electing Bush. And I have We're New England which is a really cool book about creepy, strange, weird places um, in the New England states, and Vermont is the New England states, so that's why I have that. Then I have Deer Socks and Deer Buddy. This is from a long time ago. These are um, President Clinton's pets. The book is by Hillary Rodham Clinton, but it's just kids writing letters to the pets of the White House, which I think is adorable. Then I have this thing, which no one really cares about, but it's the Children's Writers and Illustrators market. This, once again, when I used to be a serious writer and actually cared about that stuff, I had that. Someone gave it to me for Christmas. Then I have the Kids' Almanac and the Book of World Records for 2002. Yeah, that's a little bit old. What do I have back here? Oh, and then I get into my little comic section that I have. Um, this is a far side book, Wiener Dog Art. I have a big book of zits. I have Our Dumb World by the Onion, which I am currently reading, but it's about every country in the world besides, like, South Sudan, because that's a new country. But it just, yeah, it pokes fun at every country in the world. Then I have some Foxtrot. Actually, I have Foxtrot there. I have um, a companion for the Lord of the Rings movies, the official movie guide. I love the Lord of the Rings. Not so much the books, but the movies are fantastic. I have another Fireside, another Foxtrot, then I have 
this is like one of those expensive magazines that you make they make you pay like eleven dollars for because it's got lots of pretty pictures but it's the hundred places to see in your lifetime and then I randomly have resorts and great hotels. These are like the rich hotels that I would never get to stay in in my entire life. So for some reason, I just want to keep those books because it's nice to look at them. I have a couple more right here, but then I have this book about pretty cottage homes. I don't know why I have that. I'm not going to be building a cottage. I don't live in a cottage. This is an basically empty photo album that I didn't really have space for, so it's shoved right there. And I have the ultimate home plans. So I've had this book for a really long time, and I will occasionally flip through it and admire the pretty houses. This is another one of those hotel books um, that they just list all the really fancy places in the world that you can stay. And then I have, back to some regularly relatively normal books. I have the gigantic bathroom reader and the biggest ever bathroom reader. They're the Uncle John's books. I have actually read both of these in full. I have another one on my to be read shelf, but that's not getting to, that's not going to be got to anytime soon. I have a trivial pursuit book, which comes in handy at parties. And then I have a Guinness book of world records. 2001. Oh yes. Once again, I've had that for a very long time, but that completes the bottom shelf of my second bookshelf. This is my third bookshelf, and this will probably look familiar to the majority of you. This is the bookshelf that I film in front of. So let's check out the first shelf here. I have the wonderful, brilliant Sarah's Key by Tatiana de Rosne. I, ra I rave about this book all the time, so, yeah. Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. This is one of those cutesy books. But isn't that cutesy? It's a pretty good book. I enjoyed it. I really got behind the relationships in that. Oops, I just dropped it. A Mango-Shaped Space by Wendy Mass. This is another book that I really, really liked. I got randomly given it by someone and I thought it was really cool. This girl has, she sees colors associated with numbers and, and people have different colors about them. So her cat is called Mango because the color around the cat was a mango color, not because the cat was orange. <laughs> then I have The Postmistress by Sarah Blake. This is another World War II story. It was okay, it wasn't that great but it was still, it was still a good read. Then I have A Prayer for Owen Meany by John Irving. It's the only John Irving book I've ever read. It was all right. My Best Friend's Girl. This is a kind of a chiclet book, but I just thought the little boots on the cover were really adorable, so that's why I got it. Then I have The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. If you have seen the movie, do not judge the book by the movie. The book is definitely better. It's pretty scary, and it's 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 one of my favorite books in terms of just the a, a impact that it leaves you with. And I have Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen. This is a really fantastic book. I have not seen the movie, but you should definitely read the book if you haven't. And then finally, I have The Nanny Diaries. I th this was, oh man, reading this book, I was horrified at the way that parents um, of the kids treated the nannies like they were basically slaves and I enjoyed this book but my sister loves this book she has read this book multiple times and she has there's actually a follow-up to it that my sister has as well then right here I've gotten a lot of questions about this book just because of the binding of it but you've seen this cover before it's pretty little mistakes it showed up in my top 10 covers video and once again this is a really fun uh, choose your own adventure book for adults basically and then right here I have two books um, that are mystery series. Uh, I have Dancing in the Dark by Mary Jane Clark. And then I have um, Nighttime is My Time by Mary Higgins Clark. It's Those are just, yeah, authors that you usually see everywhere. And then right here I have my holiday series by Kate Can. And I have major reflection going on there. There you go. I have California Holiday, Mediterranean Holiday, Spanish Holiday, and Grecian Holiday. Um, they all have different little cutesy bathing suits on it. But my favorite is between Mediterranean Holiday and... Spanish Holiday was good, but... and Grecian Holiday. They're really fun books that if you're going on vacation, they're light reads that you can get through in no time. And then finally, I have the first two books 
in the uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series. In Swedish, it's the series of the men who hate women, something like that. And I, so I have the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and the Girl Who Played with Fire by Stieg Larsson. You'll see that I have the third book in the series in my To Be Red shelf. Right, and then we come over here and I have the Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is all of the books together in one as they were originally supposed to be, according to him. It's a good chunk over a thousand pages and there's a bunch of appendices as well. I have read the entire thing and I did read most of the appendices. It's quite a handful. Right here I have the first two in the Gemma Doyle trilogy, A Great and Terrible Beauty and Rebel Angels. They're both by Libba Bray. I'm currently rereading the third one. I have already read them, but I didn't own them at the time. So I bought them and now I have reread the copies that I actually own. And then I have the four books in the Twilight series, of course, Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, which is my favorite cover, and Breaking Dawn, right there. This is the second shelf that is usually half blocked by my body, so you don't really see the books that are on here, but we'll start in this corner. I have the four books in the, I don't even know what series it's called, it's what Janie, it's the, um, the Face in the Milk Carton, it's the first book down here. And this girl, she sees herself on a milk carton, and she finds out that her life isn't at all what she thought it was going to be. But it's a really good, suspenseful series. So there's what, whatever happened to Janie, and then the voice on the radio, and then finally, what Janie found. It's a really good series. I read them in like a couple hours. Then I have the continuation, or actually the precursor to the Lord of the Rings series. I have... Uh, the Hobbit, which is actually a really good book. If you were to read any of them, read The Hobbit, especially since the movie's coming out soon, or at least the first part of a now trilogy. And then we have The Silmarillion. Um, this is about the founding of the world, and it's actually one of the hardest books I've ever read, and one of the most boring. So yeah, don't really waste your time with The Silmarillion. I just basically challenged myself to read it, and I read them in order too. I read The Silmarillion first, then The Hobbit, and then the actual Lord of the Rings. I have The Secret Lives of First Ladies um, by Cormac O'Brien. It just talks about the different first ladies with each president and it's cool things about them, what they did, find out fun stuff, since the presidents usually get a lot of focus and not the first ladies. And I have The Lost City of Z by David Graham. This is a really cool book. I probably mentioned this in a video. I definitely have mentioned this in a video, but it's a non-fiction book. And it's about the Amazon and looking for the Lost City of Z where there's supposed to be treasure and all this really cool stuff. So this is a really good book if you're into non-fiction adventure stories. The Knife of Never Letting Go, which I have done a review on before. This is the first book in the Chaos Walking series by Patrick Ness. I recently hauled this, but it's The Hidden Magic of Walt Disney World, another Disney book for those Disney fanatics out there. Um, you can watch my video to hear a little bit more about that. Then I have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Not a huge fan of Jane Austen, uh, but I know a lot of people really love Pride and Prejudice. And I have A.J. Jacobs' The Know-It-All. Uh, he goes on a quest to read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica, and yeah, it's quite the feat, and each, it's just sort of entries about what he reads, and he relates it to what's currently going on in his life. Then I have Death in Yellowstone, Accidents of Foolhardiness, and the First National Park by Lee H. Whittlesey. Um, uh, this is the first book. I have a couple books. I have the cave book, I have this one, and then I have another one down here. But this is the first book that I got about death in a, in a park. And it's not for the faint of heart. It's pretty gruesome. It's not, if you're already in a bad mood, it's going to make you feel worse. Then I have Columbine by Dave Cullen. This was one of my top 10 covers just because it's really striking. This is a fantastic nonfiction book about Columbine and what happened and how it happened. Then I have Deja Dead by Kathy Reichs and it, oh my gosh, I can barely fit all my books anywhere. <sighs> this is the first book in the series that Bones is based off of. So, and it's a really big version. And I have J-Pod by Douglas Copeland. I like his books. They're odd. They're kind of fun. They're and they usually kind of leave you thinking. They're not just stuff that you read and quickly put down. And then the last book right here before everything else collapses, Over the Edge, Death in the Grand Canyon. This is the second book that I got in the uh, 
Death in the National Park series. Once again, some pretty sad stuff. Do not read these before you go to the Grand Canyon or Yellowstone. Then I have Stephen King's The Stand. This book was not abused to death by me. It was owned by um, other people before me, but it was just given to me. And then I also have The, the Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks. This is the first one. I think this is part of a series, but I haven't read the other ones. This, Yeah, this is volume one. I have not read the other ones. I read this a while ago, too. I don't really remember too much about it other than it was high fantasy. And then, speaking of high epic fantasy, I have the first two books in the uh, Song of Ice and Fire series. I have Game of Thrones and Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. I'm currently reading the third one and the fourth one is sitting on my to be read shelf. So this is why this is here, but I will move it so we can see more books behind it. So right here I have, this book will change your life. And it's basically do something different every day. Let me explain how you did it. You're, one of them is like write to um, a person in prison. And <laughs> it's some of it's really, really weird stuff. All right, we're just going to do that. This Game Change by John Heileman and Mark Halperin. This is actually the first book that I reviewed on this channel, in case y'all were curious. But this is about the 2008 election and the race leading up to it. Midnight in Peking. I have also reviewed this book on the channel before. This is by Paul French. It's a nonfiction book about how the murder of a young English woman haunted the last days of old China. There, that explains it. And this is also the only advanced copy book that I have ever received. <laughs> I won it on Goodreads. And then we have Sarah Vowell's Assassination Vacation. This woman was the voice of Violet in The Incredibles, but she's also an author. And then I have Wild by Cheryl Strayed, which I just reviewed on the channel, so if you're interested, if this looks cool to you, then go check that out. It's um, a memoir about hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. I have High School Confidential, The Secrets of an Undercover Student by Jeremy Iverson. This guy who has graduated from college goes undercover at a high school. And I have Pompeii by Robert Harris. I read this book. Um, a couple years ago. It's just sort of a fiction, fictional story surrounding the explosion of Pompeii, at the eruption. And then I have books by Larry McMurtry. This is one of his memoirs about books in general. And so if you like books, you'll like this book about books. 